Brothers and sisters, Brother John, Watchman for that great day. I have an article to read to you today. Uh, it's an interesting uh, thing that was just put out today. And um, so it reads this way. PA submits counterproposal to U.S. plan providing for demilitarized Palestine. Palestine, this is a quote, Palestine will be a state along the 1967 borders and its capital with East Jerusalem, its capital will be East Jerusalem, Prime Minister, Minister Shatea says, urging international pressure to stop Netanyahu's annexation project. All right. So we know that, that I'm going to continue to read this, but it's interesting that um, this is happening. This counterproposal came at a time, how many years later, uh, 52 years later, since 1967? We're now in the 72nd, roughly the 72nd, the 72nd year of Israel since 1948. I mean, all this is tying in. It's just interesting how it's all breaking on the scene now. All right. So the Palestinian Authority has sent the diplomatic quartet a plan for Palestinian statehood in response to the, the U.S. Middle East proposal, which sees parts of the West Bank being annexed by Israel. Palestinian Authority Prime Minister Mahmoud Shatea said Tuesday. We submitted a counterproposal to the quartet a few days ago. So a few days ago, today is the 9th, a few days ago, say it was either the 7th or the 6th. It's just interesting that the 6th is supposedly, according to the heavenly signs, Pe uh, Pentecost. All right? That's the, the timing of the start of the feast. If you watch uh, Brother Barry Orr's newest video, <laughs> It's, he's a very entertaining and humorous man. He's a brother in the Lord, and he certainly is. You can't take it away from him that he is watching for the day. And that's what we're all doing. We're watching for the day. Not only the day, but that great day. And what a great day it's going to be when we get raptured out of here. Any moment, any minute, imminent, any hour of any moment of any day now. That's the place I'm, I'm at. And that's the place you all should be. That's just called being ready for the moment. Okay? That's all that's doing. Now, when I'm reading these things, looking ahead to see what they're saying is going to happen, we, this, all this is going to take some time. Anything that I'm sharing with you here is just while we're here, we're looking at what is possibly going to happen just ahead of us. All right? Doesn't mean that we're here for it. So don't, you know, turn the channel. Oh, John's not talking about rapture no more. That's all I think about. That's all I care about. But we're here. So let's do a little study and look into the two sides and what, uh, what has been said and try to get a glimpse of the very soon, you know, happenings, which might happen after the rapture uh, uh, six months after. We don't know, you see. We just don't know. But we know the rapture is first. That's what we do know. But even that they've just given out a counter offer, right? Now they're at the table negotiating. You understand? Whether it's just offer to offer to offer, you see? There is things going on that we don't see. And in a moment in the twinkle of an eye, that happens. And then after that, then they the, the work that they've been working on would be shaken on. You understand? Would be confirmed, all right? So this peace plan of, of President Trump's is that agent like Albert Pike, which wrote the letter to Messini in 1878, that there was going to be three world wars and that they would provoke a, a formidable uh, social cataclysm. And that's what's going on in this country and all around the world. If you look around, you'll see that there's t total unrest. All right. It's it, it's a good picture of what the tribulation is all about and supposed to be. But doesn't mean that we're in that time of tribulation. But it does say that when the tribulation of those days, immediately after the tribulation of those days, which we are now in, doesn't mean that we're in the, the wrath of God tribulation. But we're in a time of 
uh, you know, nation against nation. This is in Matthew. And any of us that follow and read the Bible, we know that nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, uh, earthquakes in different places, famines and pestilences, and there's a famine coming according to the uh, UN, all right, as of the, 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 the end of this year. Africa, India, Pakistan, all right? That's where we're looking. We're, we're not looking for to be here for that, but that's what we're seeing on the horizon. And seeing those things, Jesus said, when you see all those things, look up. Your redemption is near. I like what Brother Barry Scarborough said in his recent message, which was six minutes. It was very easy to listen to. And, and not that I like the context of what he was saying. I don't, I'm not happy about people, you know, going to die from famine. But what I'm, what I'm sharing with you is a little bit of what I just took from him. And that is that summer is nigh, is it not? Guess what day summer begins? The summer season in this part of the world is June the 21st. It's the summer solstice, okay? June 21. Like someone else I know, Sister Gigi, 210 America. Does that mean we're still here as of 21 June? Are we going to be here on 21 July? Could it be 21 August? We don't know. The fact is, we're all in a mode. We're all, believe, we all know that the, the moment is very close. And it could be as close as the 13th of uh, June, which is on Saturday. Which just so happens to be 21 Sivan. Savan 21, another 21, okay? So we look forward to the coming of our Lord, and believe me, some of us a lot more than others, all right? If you're somewhat comfortable in this world, even now there's people that are still comfortable in this world. Now, I would imagine there's a lot less people comfortable now, but they're still in places that they're just, they you know, they see what's going on, but they just want things to get back to normal. Well, I got news for you. It's never going to get back to normal. This is not normal what's going on, and it will continue to be not normal until they bring the new world order, and then there'll be a new normal that will be this order out of chaos that they just bought about, okay? Or chaos, yeah, order out of chaos. They cause the chaos and then they offer the solution with the, the, the plans that they have to bring in the New World Order. It's rising, brothers and sisters. <laughs> new World Order is happening daily. All you need to do is look around. You see it. It's all about the New World Order and the, they, that this is the problem. And then they'll offer the solution and they're offering solutions all down the, every step of the way. They're offering solutions and that solution is, a, is an agent of change. All right? Anyway, let me read this article to you. So, the Palestinian Authority, uh, just, it just went, had to renew, had to uh, refresh. Bear with me a second. Bring it back here. Palestinian Authority has set the diplomat, sent the diplomatic quartet a plan for Palestinian statehood in response to the U.S. Middle East proposal which sees parts of the West Bank being annexed by Israel. Palestinian Authority Prime Minister Mahmoud Shetaya said Tuesday, We submitted a counter-proposal uh, to the quartet a few days ago, he said, referring to the group meditating, uh, mediating, <laughs> mediating the conflict made up of the United Nations, United States, Russia, and the European Union. Shatea said that the PA's plan provides for the creation of a sovereign Palestinian state, independent and demilitarized. That's interesting, demilitarized. Haven't heard that yet. Because that's part of the, the Trump peace plan that they will you know, have to be demilitarized. So this is one thing that they uh, both are uh, in, in line with. They're both agreeing in that, the demilitarization. Just one thing. There's a lot more that they have at odds right now, but there's one thing, okay? With minor modifications of borders where necessary. 
the Palestinian text foresaw possible land swaps between the two uh, future states uh, on a like-for-like -like basis, he said at the press conference. So if Israel likes something about this and they like something about that, then they, then they swap, okay? Announced at the end of January in Washington, U.S. President Donald Trump's peace plan provides for the annexation by Israel of 30% of the West Bank. And remember that West Bank is also known as Judea and Samaria, and uh, it's written that in it's already in the peace plan, but it's also in the Bible that ju those that would see the abomination that live in Judea, Samaria. See, that's the important thing to remember. So there will be Jews living in Judea and Samaria. So covering it, it, it says Trump's peace plan provides for for the annexation by Israel of 30% of the West Bank, covering all the settlements and the Jordan Valley with conditional pr provisions for a Palestinian state in the rest of the territory, including some areas on the outskirts of East, East Jerusalem. The Palestinians have rejected the U.S. peace plan in its entirety. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to annex the 132 settlements home to some 450,000 Israelis next month. That's just a few weeks from now. Uh, we're looking at three weeks, okay? Um, and, and the rest of the territory allocated to Israel soon after, subject to American approval. So, see, there's a green light necessary to go ahead and do this, all right, from the United States. But the United States has already had, it's already the, it's already the, um, lacking the word for it, it's already the something, it's pinned in the peace plan, it's already put out there. So, it's a matter of them doing it, okay? So, Shatea said the Palestinians were hoping that Netanyahu would not go ahead with his annexation plan. On Monday, Hassan al-Sheikh, a senior Palestinian officer and close advisor to the PA President Mahmoud Abbas, took a different track, telling the New York Times that the government in Ramallah was weighing uh, cutting of civil services, weighing cutting of civil services to its population in hope of compelling Israel to abandon its plan. Now that's interesting cutting off civil services. In other words, to the people, the Palestinians, they're going to, to cause their own people to suffer so that Israel would be compelled to abandon the plan. In other words, you know, not giving them services. <laughs> this is just whack. It's wacky if you ask me. It, 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 they're using the people as pawns if you don't see that. And that's pretty much what they've been for a long time, right? You know, so there's good people involved with these Palestinians, not just all evil people, all right? The, the more about the governments, right? It's more about the governments than the people, really, because there are people that live in Israel that are Palestinian that enjoy the, the life they live, okay? Anyway, either, either they, they backtrack on annexation and things go back to how they were, <laughs> which is the status quo, or they follow through with annexation and they go back to being the occupying power in the whole West Bank, al Sheikh said. I will not accept that. My role is a service provider. Uh, I will not accept that my role is a service provider. I'm not a municipality or a charity. EU member states are weighing options such as economic sanctions or recognition of Pal Palestinian statehood to dissuade Israel from going ahead with the plan, and what measures to take in the event that it is not dis deterred, diplomatic sources say. We want Israel to feel international pressure, Shatea said Tuesday. For the first time, the European political allies are discussing sanctions against Israel because we asked for them, he added. In recent days, 
demonstrations against Netanyahu's unilateral annexation plans to uh, have multiplied in the West Bank and in Israel without, however, drawing large crowds of Palestinian side. And that's interesting, isn't it? The anger is there. The dissatis dissatisfaction is there. The frustration is there, and all that is a receipt, uh, uh, and all that is a recipe for more problems," said Shatea, insisting, however, that the Palestinian Authority, led by Mahmoud Abbas, wanted to avoid widespread disruption. Notice who they're talking about disruption to the people, their own people. <laughs> okay. PA plans transition to state. The PA will transition from a contemporary from a temporary authority to the imposition of a state on the ground and Palestine will be a state along the 1967 borders and its capital capital will be East Jerusalem. Shatea said in remarks delivered to the Foreign Press Association in Ramallah. His comments echoed statements made Monday night to Palestinian TV when he promised to advance all that is related to the issue of transitioning the authority politically and legally into a state if Israel continues along this course. Now, I read that twice and I was wondering to advance all that is related to the issue of transitioning the authority politically and legally into a state if, if Israel continues along this course. So if Israel continues along this course, meaning they will annex, then they will make moves to uh, transition the authority politically and legally into a state? That sounds like the that sounds exactly like what is supposed to happen. They're supposed to become a state politically and legally. So I don't understand that part of this article, but that's just the way it's written. All right, so should Israel annex large parts of the West Bank and the Jordan Valley on July 1st, Shatea said, the Palestinian Authority will undertake a constitutional announcement. <laughs> it sounds all good to me. Constitutional announcement, they're going to say that they're a state, I guess. Uh, an independent state, in fact. And establish a con constituent assembly. I looked up the word constituent just to, just to give you what that is. The constituent is being a part of a whole. Being a voting member of a community or organization and having power to appoint or elect. So this all sounds good to me. I don't know what the problem is. There, it, it gives what in if this is correct. What it's saying is that if Israel starts to annex, that they will become a state. It's it's at odds with what they're saying at at the same time. It, it's just confusing, really. Anyway. We go back to the article. This is not the first time that the PA officials have announced a deadline for a unilateral declaration of independence. In 2011, the Palestinian Authority became a non-member, uh, a non-state member of the United Nations General Assembly after a, multi a unilateral push for international recognition. During the same period, then. Palestinian Prime Minister Shalom Fayyad stated repeatedly that his government intended to pursue a declaration of statehood with or without Israel's consent. No one want the, they can be a state. That's the the whole thing is about them becoming a viable state. Is what it's looking like, right? They want to offer them a capital. If you have a capital for a country, aren't you? Aren't you? Uh, that makes you your your independent nation, right? An independent state having a capital. It's <laughs> anyway. The Palestinian Authority, however, never followed through on those threats, and and it's a threat, right? Why is it a threat? The idea is. 
that always has been, at least when it comes to the Palestinians and the agreements and everything else, has been two, two states. But of course, this peace plan that that um, Trump has put forth is for two states, but it it's more in favor of Israel, and it's actually more it's actually all the way in favor of both. Okay because they demilitarize, and that's really the problem right now, is that there's militants and uh, militarization in Gaza. That's where they get a problem from, as well as from others, but that's, you know, what they gave up, what Israel gave up, land for peace, you know. It's just interesting, the whole situation in the article. So, the Palestinian Authority, however, never followed through on those threats. Instead, returning to bilateral negotiations with Israel uh, mediated by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. Remember that? Remember all that? The quartet. Nonetheless, nonetheless, my friends, Shatea's announcement is take, taking place in a considerable more fraught moment and with much tighter timeline. While Fayyad indicated that months or years might pass before Palestine declared itself um, an independent state, less than a month remains before Netanyahu can start annexing parts of the, U of the West Bank under the terms of his coalition deal with rival turned partner Benny Gantz, the alternate Prime Minister and Defense Minister. Alternate Prime Minister and Defense Minister. So we're on a very short time frame considering what this is talking about the rapture has nothing to do with what they're talking about we can be raptured out at any time so understand that it's any moment now any minute any moment any hour during any day and if we should happen to be here by July the 1st well then we're gonna see something that's going on with the Middle East See, we're watching all the way, seeing what each step of the way, as long as we're here to see it, until it doesn't matter to us at all. And that's when we get raptured out. We're raptured out before the, 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 uh, the confirming, the shaking of hands, or the, the making greater of this covenant, which they're now at the table talking. All right? Because there's a offer, and then there's a counteroffer. That's called negotiating. So I guess up until now, with the coming annexation, this has provoked, if you will, this has provoked the differences between the 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 state of Israel and the and Islam, the Muslims, right? The two uh, the two uh, entities. Let's call them entities, right? Two states, two entities. And the, the agent of the Illuminati is basically the idea of this, this peace plan, as well as actual men and people and, and all of the things that go on behind the scenes. The Illuminati, all of the things that are going on now are pointing us in the direction of a confirmed covenant, which totally brings us to the time of what? When they confirm the covenant, what is that? What happens? In the understanding that we know from Daniel, the 70th week is, is starts, right? The last seven years. Now, I know there's a lot of brothers and sisters. Everyone's got a different view. So, even if it's not for seven years, because it's broken in the midst, could it be that, it's, that Jesus Christ served the first three and a half years, right? And then he was the one that was cut off. That's the way Daniel works as well. Because it's all about Jesus. It's all about the Messiah that first came, which they missed, and was cut off having no one, having nothing, right? But he did it not for himself, but for us. You understand? So it's that's another view. But it all relates to a confirming of some kind of a covenant or an agreement, a peace agreement, and a war breaking out and all of the things that we're watching and all of this is 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 scheduled for July the 1st whether it goes into the Knesset and they had to vote about it whatever okay the thing is July the 1st is the deadline 
where Israel is going to step over the line and start to direct and and um, ah, no word start to move into the into that land and place it and separate it for their uh, state for their uh, country all right so let me go down to the a little further down in the article here so I lo it refreshed on me again so you got to bear with me to find that uh, so then and I'll start with this so uh, we wanted Israel to feel international pressure Shatea said Tuesday uh, for the first time European let's see here it is PA plans to transition to state okay so and I read that then I read that yeah read that so should Israel annex large parts of the West Bank in the Jordan Valley on July the 1st Shatea said Palestinian Authority will undertake a constitutional yeah I read that announcement and establish a con constituent assembly Um, under the coalition deal signed between Netanyahu and the Blue and White Party leader Gantz, the, the government can begin the process of applying Israeli sovereignty to the West Bank settlements and the Jordan Valley starting on July the 1st. It was unclear whether Shatea proposed constitutional announcement would result in genuine changes in how the Palestinian Authority functions. In, Palest in Palestinian media soon after his remarks Tuesday, articles led with Palestinian authorities' inability to pay civil servants their monthly salaries with Shatea's threats regarding uh, reg uh, reg uh, at the end, at the last few paragraphs. So he said it after they, they told everybody, oh, we're, having, we're not going to be able to pay our our civil servants their their pay and then at the end uh, Shatea's threat comes out that they're gonna they're gonna go ahead and make a constitutional announcement I, this is just it's all insanity right it's all crazy all we know is what we're waiting for who are we waiting for are we waiting for man to to figure out what he's gonna do no there's a plan already there's a plan on the table. All they're going to do is they're going to fulfill that plan to the T. And how much of it we see, it remains to be seen. Because we could be raptured in a moment from now. We could be raptured later on tonight. We could be raptured before we wake up tomorrow morning. We can be raptured at any moment. So if you don't know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior now, I don't know what you're waiting for because the the world is changing and it's happening daily it's not taking like months and years and even this is on a very short timeline by July the 1st just remember that by July the 1st all right there's a lot of things happening before July the 1st we're still in June we have not gone through the summer and the summer is nigh just remember that and when you see all these things begin to happen, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Amen? All right, brothers and sisters. Let me give you the blast on the shofar. Realize that we're very, very close. Go watch Brother Barry Oz's newest video. It, it's like 36 minutes long, but it is awesome. And he is funny. So, if you know, it's an entertaining video, but what he points out in there is that what we're dealing with right now is a seven day period and just so happens that the seventh day is the 13th of June and that happens to be the 21st day of Sivan and it just brings my thought right to Sister Gigi which said 20 Winds of America was in her dream the tree that she could hear the voice booming it was so incredibly high up into the heavens and that's the voice she heard booming out of that 21 zero America. Well, we've been trying to figure out where that 21 zero America is. And perhaps that's it. Perhaps it's Saturday. God bless you all. Brother John, blowing the show for us. So take your earbuds out. 
maybe this is the last time. Maybe, maybe it'll be the end of the day or an hour from now. But take your earbuds out. Here it goes. pray for me. I'm going through it just like all of you. It's very difficult now. Um, but the Spirit of God, greater is He that's in me than it that's in the world. But oh my God, it's just God is with me. God is with you. God is with all of us. And I pray for all of you daily. I thank you for watching. And Brother John, watchman for that great day. Out.